and uh, welcome back to the Steve Molesberg Show, ladies and uh, gentlemen. And uh, joining us uh, right now is uh, our friend Mark Morano, Executive Director of ClimateDepot.com, or as Barack Obama might call it, ClimateDepot.com. Uh, hey, Mark, how are you? Doing very well today, Steve. Well, I don't know how you could be because you should be quaking in your boots. We should all be shaking and trembling and, and looking at the ocean to make sure the seas aren't rising, as Al Gore would say, uh, because the U.N. climate report uh, has determined that, um, guess what? Uh, man is responsible for global warming. Of course, they forgot to mention that uh, there is no global warming and hasn't been for the last 15 years. Yes. In fact, this is, you know, the U.N. has proved itself very adept at exhumation. It's exhuming the old body of the catastrophe back from the grave. I mean, politicians <laughs> are now dancing and activists like it's 2007. They're partying. I mean, this is, it's as though climate gate never happened. It's as though all the data from sea level, lack of sea level rise acceleration to polar bear numbers increasing to droughts, floods, hurricanes, either having negative trends, I mean, downward trends or no trends. It, it is a... Um, uh, just a sight to behold, to watch them go forward. They're basically saying, pay no attention to current data because we promise you things are going to get really bad in the future and we must act now to prevent it. In fact, at my website, Steve, Today Climate Depot, one of the lead authors of this report today is a guy named Tom Stocker. You'll hear him quoted in all the media reports. He advocated just two years ago tripling the price of gas to save the planet. And he also <laughs> urged Americans to make a significant dent in their emissions by reducing their per capita energy use. These are activists, protected by governments, these scientists, and they do a report that they know the outcome before they start it. In fact, this is only the summary, and the actual report won't be out till January. Well, let, 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 me, let me give you let me give you a term in science. Let me give you a quote. Uh, the report, uh, when trying to address the uh, fact that the the temperature um, has risen, uh, you know, not at all, basically in the in the last 15 years, uh, 0 0.05 degrees uh, Celsius or 0 0.09 degrees Fahrenheit uh, per decade. And and here's what. It they, they say, due to natural variability, trends based on short records are very sensitive to the beginning and, and end dates and do not in general reflect long-term climate trends. Well, so we're talking about 15 years. They're going back from the 70s. The, from 98, there's been no temperature rise. So they're going for the for, uh, they're basing all this from when we expected an ice age in the 70s. They're going from that point to the 90s. But from the 90s till now, which is the same short term period, quote unquote, that doesn't count. Only their short term period counts. Exactly. exactly. Time magazine was the best. Exactly your point. When it was warming, the reason was clearly CO2. The climate was a very simple. CO2 was a control knob. But now that it's not warming, time is saying the reason isn't known. It's such a complex system. That's what we've been saying all along. CO2 is not the tail that wags the dog. And you have these people out there that say the fact that there's a greenhouse effect, that CO2 can have a warming effect, ergo the debate's over, we're facing a catastrophe. No, because humans can both warm and cool the planet. We can cool it through our use of aerosols. We can cool it through land use policies. We have many ways in which we can, I mean, when I say we can warm and cool it, it's not even distinguishable from natural variability, but humans have the capacity to do that. Where they lost the, pl the plot here was they tried to act as though a trace essential gas in the atmosphere, carbon dioxide, was somehow the control knob for global temperatures and global climate patterns, i.e. hurricanes, tornadoes, etc. And that is just showing up as the most fraudulent claim in the peer-reviewed literature, whether you're talking about their extreme weather. You know, we're, we're at the point now where we have Barbara Boxer citing the United Nations uh, as scientists and going down to the floor of the U.S. Senate on the day after Oklahoma gets hit with, with big tornadoes and arguing for a carbon tax. And yeah. so a carbon tax would prevent these big tornadoes from forming. Well, it's the same, it's the same garbage that we heard, you know, and, and, and you and I talked earlier in the week uh, about how uh, Charlie Rose interviewed uh, Al Gore and Bill Clinton. Clinton at the Clinton Initiative, Global Initiative, um, yes. and and uh, and it turns out that in in that thirty minute interview, Charlie Rose never once. And Al Gore, I'm telling you, 
he was on fire baby he was he was global warming he was m more more defiant than his old self he wasn't preaching in that that preacher uh, uh, kind of tone and, and style but he was saying oh you know and, and well they people may yeah but people are moving in that direction now even if they don't really believe they're saying we gotta do something about these storms super storm sandy blah 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 but Charlie Rose never once in 30 minutes said hey Al Gore uh, the temperatures haven't gone up in 15 years. Never brought it up once. Yes, and that was you know that was typical. I just watched earlier today CNN did a whole segment on this, and they actually ended the segment just uncritical about the United Nations. And they ended the segment by saying, "And Al Gore issued a statement in support." And of course, it was Al Gore who first. Oh won God! I mean, they're sitting there just pat like like Al Gore is their secular savior, as, uh, <laughs> as uh, the secular Noah, as Over Winfrey once called him. I mean, the bottom line is this is a political report. It's a science body. It's a political body masquerading as a – I mean, the bottom line is this is a political report. It's a science body. It's a political body masquerading as a star, the New York Times, the Washington Post, the Associated Press, and some of the British uh, left-wing papers. But otherwise, the world seems to be taking a collective yawn of this because this is you – know, the head of it, Rajendra Pachari, the last report he announced about a year or two before the 2007 climate report by the U.N., that wait till you see the next report, it'll be so alarming, the world will have to act. They predict the science years in advance. They're like Babe Ruth predicting where they're going to hit the ball. Well, well, well here, and, and we're, ta we're talking to Mark Morano, uh, the uh, founder of a Climate Depot, uh, dot, uh, org here on the, uh, on the Steve Malsberg show, dot com. I always say that. You can never, why is it that a Climate either Depot, way. dot com, either way, okay, but Climate Depot, dot com. But here's, it, it, there, there have been, I believe, a study in the Journal of Nature Climate Change uh, that compared 117 climate predictions, since you're talking about predictions, made in the 90s to the actual amount of warming, how they actually turned out. Out of 117 predictions, the study's author uh, found that three, three of 117 predictions were roughly accurate and 114 overestimated the amount of warming. Yeah, and you know what's funny is a clock, a stopped clock is right twice a day. So they didn't even make like some minimum standards, you know, on this, with these levels. So, and this is exactly right. And the thing that's so important about that is they will look back and they'll look at the medieval warm period and they'll say, well, it may have been as warmer, warmer, after claiming it didn't exist. Now they're forced to admit it because there's like hundreds of studies showing that the medieval warm period was as warmer, warmer than current temperatures back in like 900 A.D. to 1300 A.D. But they will say... We've done climate model simulations, and there's no other way. We can explain medieval warmth through solar activity and other things, but there's no way to explain the temperature today unless we do CO2 in our climate models. Well, the climate models don't even account for half the variability in nature. They're not even called predictions by the people who make them. One U.N. scientist, Kevin Trenberth, said they're merely emission scenarios. Yet the faith they put in them, they're now called data by many scientists. And if the, the, here's the kicker. If the real-world observational data doesn't matter, the models. They think something's wrong with the data, not the right. Models. Right. Well, I'm, gla I'm glad. It's just, it's just I'm, I'm glad, Mark. You said a kicker because in uh, in radio parlance and uh, TV, that means uh, the last story. And uh, uh, just uh, thanks for joining us today. And you know, folks just have to use their common sense, and they do. The polls show less and less and fewer and fewer people here and worldwide uh, believe in global warming, care about so-called global warming. They're more concerned about their jobs, the cost of energy, the cost of living, and this would just, uh, just uh, turn that whole thing upside down. Mark, thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Take care. Mark Morano, ladies thank and gentlemen.